for Rother Valley and for Across the North. Thank you. Can we address some oil? Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, uh, and I'm pleased to follow lots of impassioned speeches about their community and great to hear a bit more about Rother Valley uh, in that one just passed. Uh, I was reading today's Daily Telegraph, not something that I do regularly, but I always think, I always think it's good to know what the enemy think. Um, the front page of it today reported that the American government, and Pompeo believes that the Chinese are responsible for thousands of deaths yes. Yes. in this country. Yes. And did the Foreign Secretary or the Prime Minister challenge these assertions? Well, the report didn't suggest that they had. I've heard no challenge of those particular assertions. Now, I am no fan of the Chinese authorities. On my first delegation to China in 2006, I raised with the socialist group of uh, colleagues uh, from the Socialist International that were there the issues of human rights in China. And my view is that human rights condition in China has gone downhill from there, not improved. But to raise conspiracy theories and not have them challenged by our government is yeah. extremely dangerous. Yeah. In the middle pages of the Daily Telegraph, another article that says racist hate crimes against Chinese and South Asian people in this country have increased by 61% so far this year. Now, if people in this House can't see that link, I implore you to look again, because there is a clear link with misinformation about China and racist attacks that Chinese people get in this country. We must not play the game of China of misinformation and lies and abuses of human rights. We must win this battle, and I think there is a global battle of ideas and a global battle of the future that we want our world to be like. We must win it based on our values of truth, of justice, of democracy and of human rights. That's why many of my constituents were deeply concerned when the Royal Mail delivered through their doors this racist rag, the yep. Epoch Times. It is a disgusting magazine that the Royal Mail have voluntarily decided to deliver, not on their, um, their universal uh, service, but on a contract, a private contract, of which they're entitled to refuse. And they're entitled to refuse if it brings uh, the service into disrepute, if it is dangerous, if it relates, uh, um, if it is harmful, likely to harm or upset the receiver. Well, I will tell you what this newspaper says. It says there have been several cases of people recovering from the CCP pneumonia. They don't call it COVID. Miraculously, after they've condemned the CCP, they say, if you condemn the CCP and China, you will recover from the CCP pneumonia, otherwise COVID. This is just lies. This is dangerous lies because it not only promotes racism, it also suggests to people that they can be cured or they can avoid getting coronavirus if they are racist. And who is the funder of this magazine that has gone through every constituent in my constituency and numerous other constituencies around this country? The Epoch Times is the biggest funder of online advertising for the Trump campaign in this coming election later on this year. There is a direct link to the US and the racism that is peddled in our streets. And it is incumbent on our government to stand up to it. Now, I've written to Royal Mail. They gave a very weak response initially. They have now responded more seriously. And I'm hoping that we will further investigate this. Because to me, it is not acceptable for people to receive this through their homes. The reality is, however, many people don't live in permanent homes. They live in temporary rented accommodation. And they don't know when the door will ring and it will be their landlord asking them to be kicked out on a... Um, section notice, either 8 or 21. Um, and this government has suggested that they wish to abolish those no-fault evictions, but we're still waiting for that law to be enforced. 
they told renters in my constituency and across the country that they wouldn't have to worry about having to leave their home because of arrears of coronavirus. We heard today from the excellent UQ of my friend, the Shadow Secretary of State for Housing, that, um, that the government wish landlords to take COVID into account, but will do nothing to require them to do that and will not suspend Section 8. Section 8, of course, which don't allow the courts to use their, um, uh, their, their judgment, require the courts to evict with no questions asked if you're in two months of arrears. Just that section needs to be abolished and the no-fault evictions, and we would be in a much better standing for renters in our communities and particularly in Brighton. And I'll finish very briefly on saying, of course, Brighton is a seaside holiday resort across the coast, including <laughs> Peacehaven and Salt Dean in my constituency, welcomes all of you during the summer. Come and enjoy our lovely Lido, our lovely beach, enjoy our parks. I hope to see you there.